This video is just on rendering audio in Handbrake. These principles will also apply to other rendering stuffs, but we're just going to talk about movies and TV shows, surround sound, stereo, whatever. We're going to cover that in this video. I'll try to keep it succinct, more succinct than other things, because there's really only one or two ways to do things. So after the ad, we'll hop in to Handbrake and get this done. Thanks to WhoKeys for sponsoring this video. You can get 25% off Windows and Office with coupon code TS25. So they've got Windows 10 Pro, they've got Home, you've got Windows 11, Office 2021, 2019, and 2016. Putting in coupon code TS25, click apply, and then watch these prices come down. Wonderful. Once you're finished, all you have to do is click on your user account up here, go to your user center, click on my purchase orders, and then you'll see everything you've purchased right there. Just view keys and codes, and you can just copy and paste your key, hit start, type activate, click on activation settings, paste it in there, click on next, and you will be activated. If you're a home user, you're gonna pay 10 times more than an OEM builder or a corporation or something like that. And that's why I like heading to places like whokeys.com to get the OEM keys so I can pay a price that makes sense. So thanks to them for sponsoring and now to our regularly scheduled program. These principles will apply to not only just Handbrake, FFmpeg, and even if you wanted to render your own audio files, MP3s, uh, Opus files, whatever, Vorbisog, these principles will apply. That's all we're gonna talk about right here. So right now I'm rendering Indiana Jones and the, the Blu-ray came with all kinds of different audio options. When you're rendering them, you can add as many as you like or as few as you like. Now I'm gonna explain all of these different you know, file types you see up here. So lossy and lossless, those are the two things we need to think about. Lossless is essentially perfect. There's no compromises made, but they're much higher file sizes, much bigger. And we have some very good compression algorithms as well. True HD and DTS HD are both lossless. And if you're not sure which one you like the best, the best way to do this is to put it on and try a couple of the different, you know, try a couple of these different things and see which one sounds the best. And note that some of these may sometimes be commentary. They're usually labeled as commentary, but sometimes they're uncommentary as well. What does that mean? Then we get down into the AC3. And AC3, AC3 is a lossy codec. It sounds very good and most people will not be able to tell the difference between this and some of these other ones unless they have extremely keen ears. But a lot of people are not gonna be able to tell the difference. But I would always go to the original file and listen to them because sometimes these are not all just the same thing in different formats. Sometimes these are completely different sound files that the studios render. Maybe this one is like, okay, this is the new mix down, but this, this is the original mix down from the 80s. So you gotta like listen to each one of these and see which one it is. Some of them sound cleaner, some of them sound different. Or you can go online and say like, okay, what are these different English audio tracks? What, what is what? So do that with your, with your media, the ones that are important. Most things will not have this many options. They'll just have one English, but I picked this one because it has a lot of different options. So how do I like to do this? Well, let's say I listen to them all and I like the True HD best. And I want to mix that down to 5.1. So which codec am I going to use? It's going to be Opus. Opus is the best compression algorithm right now. It's made by the same people who made Vorbis Aug, which was an open source alternative to MP3 that sounded better than MP3. It sounded almost as good as AAC. AAC is what you see on a lot of the Apple uh, files. And I believe, I believe Spotify, I don't use Spotify, but I believe Spotify uses this because it's a very good codec. Um, it compresses very well and gives you pretty good sound. Everything's better than MP3 these days almost. So AC3 is um, more for movies and such. And then down here on the bottom, we have FLAC. Now FLAC is free lossless audio codec. The file sizes are four to five times the size, but it is still is a compressed codec that does not have, you know, it's not lossy at all. So it's a really good one if you want to have like archival stuff this is a good way to go. But if you're going for like the highest quality at the smallest file size, you gotta go with Opus. Now Opus, it usually needs 80 to 100, um, as far as the bits go, 80 to 100 per channel. And I'm gonna explain the bit rate right now. This bit rate is what you get entirely. So you have to divide that by how many channels you have. So I'm gonna mix this down to 7.1. I'm gonna mix it down to 5.1. And then I'm gonna set it to 512. 
This is overkill for Opus. 95% of the people are not going to be able to tell the difference in 448 versus 512, but I want to make sure it's always crystal clear. And you don't generally need as much when we're talking movies compared to uh, music because there's not always as much going on. You might start to hear a little bit of splashiness or some weirdness in scenes with have like, you know, an airplane dogfight and there's also a full symphony orchestra in the background. So I just put it up here. And this Opus at 512 will sound awesome. Now, if you wanted to mix it down to stereo, well, then you're not going to need that much. So I usually recommend 192. That's the point where most people just cannot tell the Opus from the original at 192 stereo. It's just, if you're listening to it with headphones, it's going to sound just like the original. And I also want to mention that a lot of times when you're mixing these things down, and one, one of the things pretty interesting about this is when you're watching this back, if you're watching it on 2.1 speakers or headphones, um, if you have a decent program that's playing your movies, it can generally give you something called a virtual center channel. And that's a rabbit hole you can go down, but it makes the speech sound as if you had a center speaker, even though you don't. I have 2.1 speakers at home, had surround sound at one point, but I don't miss it that much. I mean, maybe a little, but I like having the smaller setup. All right, so now let's talk about how to create a preset that always will will default to Opus. So up here on the top, we can go save as new preset. And when you're doing that, you can you know set up all your video and audio presets and such. We're just talking about audio right now. So on audio, we can select our audio behavior. Now I want to pass through all of the lossy codecs. So if I download a file and it has, you know, or if I acquire a file and it already is compressed, you know, it already has AAC or AC3 or whatever, I don't want to recompress that. That's a bad idea. So what's happening here is I'm telling it to you know, use this pass-through behavior. If it sees any of these files, don't render it, just, just pass it on through. But if we see these files, TrueHD, DTSHD, DTS, I guess I'll pass that through as well. But these three here are lossless, and they're big, they're huge. And we can compress them with Opus, and it's going to sound just like the original. So that's what I'm going to do, and then down here on the bottom, you select it to Auto Pass-Through. So I've just told this, every time we see these files, we follow these rules. It says auto pass through, so it goes, okay. All of these get passed through, and these get rendered as Opus. Now we have to decide if we want to do stereo or 5.1. And again, if you're gonna do 5.1, you need to bring up the bit rate to match. Just about 100 per channel or so. Now, a lot of files you download are only going to have stereo. Sometimes that's the way it works. So if you have your automatic settings set to do 5.1, well, it's gonna be like trying to turn stereo into 5.1. So what you're gonna to have to do is probably create two presets, one for surround sound and one for stereo and save them both. And then depending on what file you're using, you can select that preset. I don't mess with any of this unless there's a very specific reason to do so. If you add gain, a lot of times it can bring the volume up a little bit for older movies, but it'll also bring up the noise. So you, you can mess with both of these and try to achieve a balance, but that's a very specific use case. Uh, and it's v usually for older movies or stuff that just doesn't have very good audio. And then you can cho choose what languages you have here, but we don't need to talk about that. So this is also true for your music. Just try rendering your music with Opus, but I wanna give you one little tip about, about music rendered in Opus. So I found that around 200 is where Opus becomes perfect. Like, I can't tell the difference between this it sounds better than a 320 kilobit um, MP3, and it's much smaller than a 320 kilobit MP3. This is where I really can't tell the difference between a WAV file, a FLAC file, and this super compressed file right here. Keep it on VBR, 200 around 200 kilobytes a second, and Opus. Now, one thing I'll note is that when you render this out, this is kind of annoying. So let me just go ahead and render this. If you want to listen to audio and you have Opus files, some, not all, but some older audio programs and some dumber new audio programs don't recognize this. But check this out. I can come over and just make this an, uh, an AUG file. Yes, yes, it's fine. And it's totally fine. It'll open up and it'll play just fine. There it is. So they're, they're really similar. I mean, both made by Vorbis. So it's just changing the container there. It's still an Opus file, but you can just change it to an AUG container. That's It's that simple. You literally just change the extension. And then all of a sudden those programs are like, oh, I know how to play this. So most of the time it'll work just fine. Extra credit over. See you at epicpants.com. Thanks for checking that out. And uh, make some nice sounding audio, why don't you?